What's going on, everyone? Welcome back to the show. So today's topic, we are going to take a look at Representative Larson. He's going to be talking about Social Security and Social Security reform. I have not listened to this yet. This is going to be the first time uh, he was on the House floor. And any time I hear a politician talk about Social Security, I will bring that information to you. Okay, now I know some of you guys in the comments say, you know, they're just talk. It's all talk. They just keep talking. They're not doing anything. Well, I'm bringing you the updates. I'm bringing you the information that's coming from them. Okay, I can't make them do something, but I can provide you the information that they're providing us. And I think we need to, to be at a point where we're paying attention to them. That's the only way we'll see some type of movement. If we pay attention to what they're doing and what they're saying and what they're not doing and what they're not saying, that's when they will take notice and say, we need to do something because if we don't, our job could be in jeopardy. It's just like uh, if you're, uh, wor you know, you're working, you have a boss, and your boss is never paying attention to you. Well, at some point, you might get to get a little comfortable and think, well, you know what, I don't really have to do much because the boss isn't paying attention. They don't know what I do, and they don't really care to know what I do. But as soon as that boss starts asking you some questions, starts paying attention to what you're doing, maybe even saying, hey, I, I saw you did this or I saw you did that. Why did you do this or why did you do that? Then you're going to start saying, whoa, they're watching me. So maybe I better do my job and do my job good because I could be, I could lose my job if I don't. And in that same scenario, the boss is us. Okay, we have people in Congress that represent us, and if they're not representing us, that's when you get someone new to come in. That's when you vote someone out who's not doing the job. And so the only way that we're going to know what's going on is by finding out what these politicians are doing and what they're not doing, what they're saying and what they're not saying. And so that's why I bring you guys this information. So, Representative Larson, we're going to take a look and a listen to uh, what he has to say. But before we do that, two favors. That's all I'm asking. Like the video and subscribe to the channel. Okay, so let's go ahead. I'm going to play this, and uh, then we'll, we'll talk a little bit about it. Maybe we'll talk as we, as we watch it. Uh, I'm not sure yet. Like I said, I haven't watched this yet, so this will be the first time. Here we go. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I arise today to talk about the nation's uh, number one anti-poverty program for the elderly and the number one anti-poverty program for our children. That program, Mr. Speaker, as you know, is Social Security. Uh, Mr. Speaker, and for the members in the uh, gallery, I think it's important to understand the statistics that we're dealing with. Uh, most importantly, that there are now close to 70 million Americans that rely on Social Security. 70 million Americans. 40 now, just, just think of how powerful that is. I think in the, the last election, 2020 uh, election, presidential election, there was roughly 70 to 80 million people uh, voted for each candidate. Okay, so just think of how powerful... 70 million people are, and that can really move an election. And so, I, I you know, it, you have to understand how much power you have and move forward with that power and let politicians know. That's why, that's why politicians don't want to touch Social Security. They don't want to talk about it, okay? Some of them want to touch it. They want to make cuts to it, but they want to do it behind closed doors. But they don't want to talk about Social Security if they want to do something negative to Social Security because they know there's 70 million people who rely on Social Security every day. And so if they make drastic changes, they fear that they could lose their, their, their job because you're looking at 70 million people. All you need is a portion of that, just 20, 30 percent of those people to say, you know what, this person needs to be out of office. And guess what? They're probably going to get voted out. But you have to come together. You have to know the information. You have to come together. And that's how you move forward. Percent of whom, for a pension, that is the only benefit that they have. Testimony to the genius of Franklin Delano Roosevelt and what's required 
in an entrepreneurial capitalistic system that there be a safety net for people. Even more so, imagine that 10,000 baby boomers a day become eligible for Social Security. And dishearteningly, Congress, the institution primarily responsible for Social Security's enhancement and protection, has not done anything in 53 years. Richard Nixon was the President of the United States the last time Social Security was enhanced. Now, and for five million Americans, five million of our fellow citizens get below poverty level checks from Social Security, the greatest insurance program in the nation's history. But Congress has not attended to the program. And that's why this is so vitally important that we do so. Mr. Speaker, as you know, in Idaho, in the first district, there are 219,000 plus Social Security recipients, 170,000 plus who are retirees, 21,000 who get disability. There are 10,000 plus widows, 5,600 spouses, 11,000 children in Idaho who rely on Social Security. It brings into the first district $388 million monthly and has not been adjusted in more than 50 years. This is an outrage. And when members learn of this, and when the public is aware of this, they say, and why hasn't Congress acted? President Biden has suggested, and it makes sense, that, hey, listen, in this great nation of ours, why shouldn't everybody pay the same? So he said, let's just simply lift the cap on people making over 400,000 that don't pay nearly the same that a person making 30,000 or 50,000 or 75 or 100,000 who pay into the program. And in doing so, we would be able to enhance Social Security, not only in Idaho, but across the entire United States. Even, pre even uh, former President Trump now is apparently changing the Republican platform to say we're going to protect Social Security. It's not enough to protect Social Security. Congress hasn't done anything in more than 53 years. So that means whether you're in Idaho or whether you're in Connecticut, those very citizens, those 10,000 a day baby boomers who expect their Congress to take action on their behalf, need to enhance a program that provides them with the benefits. And that money goes directly into every congressional district and every congressional community. And where do the citizens spend that money? At the grocery store, at the pharmacy, at the gas station. It goes to the essential needs that Americans require. That's why Social Security is the number one anti-poverty program for the elderly, and also the number one anti-poverty program for children. What Congress needs to do is not talk about it, it needs to vote. Citizens in the gallery and across this nation should demand that the United States Congress vote on Social Security and correct something that's gone in disrepair for more than 50 years. I yield back. Gentlemen, yield. All right, there's Representative Larson talking about Social Security, talking about Social Security reform, enhancing Social Security.
And so, and he talked a little bit about former President Trump wants to protect Social Security. He has said that. Recently, he has said that. Uh, now, he's kind of flip-flopped because he did say that he wanted to cut Social Security, and then he quickly changed that and said, no, I'm going to protect. I will never cut Social Security or Medicare uh, while I'm president. But just saying that you want to protect it, just saying that you'll never cut it, that is not enough, okay? Saying that you won't cut Social Security doesn't cut it because you need to reform Social Security because we're looking at a, you know, we're going to fall off the cliff when it comes to Social Security in about 10 or 11 years. We're looking at a situation where the trust funds will run out of money. That will be a 23% cut across the board for everyone receiving Social Security benefits. So we need to make changes. We need to tune it up. But we haven't, and like, like Representative Larson was saying, we haven't changed or enhanced Social Security in over 53 years. So something needs to happen. We need to make those changes. And so, as I stated, anytime I hear a lawmaker, whether they're pro-enhancement to Social Security or against enhancing Social Security, I will bring that information to you. And if you guys see a, a video clip or you see an article where you have lawmakers and they're talking about Social Security, send it to me. You can send me an email and, and provide that information to me. That way, I can put it in future videos. Uh, you can also just put it in the comments. Just put a, you know, put, a, I saw this article or I saw this video and put a link there in the comments and I'll check it out and uh, we'll, we'll do a video on it. But it's very important that we know who we're voting for. And that's why at the end of every video, I have that little tag at the very end that says know who you're voting for because it's important that you know how these politicians feel about these issues. Because they're the ones that are deciding what's going to happen to Social Security. And they're the ones that are deciding what's going to happen to all the different, uh, you know, different legislation, different uh, policy that's out there. And so we want to make sure we get the right people in place. And if you get the right people in place, you're going to have a good outcome when it comes to Social Security. One last thing I want to say, and, and this is what Representative Larson was talking about this. This is a win-win for everyone. So let's say you have a small business and you have, you know, they, they enhance Social Security benefits. Well, guess what? If they provide a $200 increase or whatever they do to enhance Social Security, the people that are receiving Social Security in, in these districts all over, all over the U.S., they're going to go out and they're going to spend that money. They're going to go to the grocery store. They're going to go to the cleaners and all these, you know, small businesses. If you want to improve small businesses, this is a way to do it because you're giving people a little extra money from Social Security, and they're going to go out and spend it. Now, you've always heard that, you know, the trickle-down economics where you give money to the wealthy and they will reward you by, you know, the, the money will trickle down to you. We should be looking at it the other way around. Because if you give wealthy people money, they don't have to spend it. Because if you're wealthy, that's just more money that they can invest in some different things, maybe even outside of the U.S. And they can do a lot of different things with their money, okay? But when you give money to people who are living paycheck to paycheck or people who are retired, they're going to spend that money. They can't just say, you know, I'm going to go ahead and invest this. No, if you give people a little extra money, they're going to go out and they're going to spend it. And they should. And so it's better for us to look at a system where we are providing, and this is, this is the thing we have to understand when it comes to Social Security. Don't tie Social Security in with some of these other assistance programs. Social Security is something that you pay into your whole life. You contribute. And the plan is, when you retire, you're going to be able to get those benefits or get some of those benefits. That's how it works. You're contributing to this. And so by allowing people who are contributing for 20, 30, 40 years a little bit extra, I don't see a problem in that. And you provide them a little bit extra, and they go out and they spend that money and they help the businesses in, the, in, their, in their area. And so I want to know what you guys think about this. Uh, what, what do you think about Representative Larson? If you guys don't know, 
Representative Larson, he authored a, a, a proposal that's been out since, I think he started it back in 2014, but he keeps reintroducing it. It's a Social Security 2100 Act. Look at that proposal if you haven't done so already. I have some videos where I talk about it, so you can check my videos out as well. But uh, in that proposal, he's talking about an increase across the board for people receiving Social Security benefits. He's also He also wants to eliminate weapon GPO. So there's a lot of different things in there. He wants to eliminate taxes on people receiving Social Security benefits because some people receiving Social Security benefits, they're paying taxes on that. So he wants to eliminate that. And uh, he wants to adjust the cost of living adjustment. So right now they're using the CPIW. He wants to move that over to the CPIE. CPIE is for the elderly, so it better reflects the, the spending of um, you know, elderly people. So he wants to do a lot of different things in this proposal. So I, I really encourage you guys to check that out. And at least you'll have an idea of what's out there when it comes to different proposals. That way, when you hear a politician say, oh, yeah, we just need to raise the full retirement age and uh, maybe means test Social Security, you start hearing all that stuff and you're thinking, well, what are they really talking about? Well, what about this? Then you bring that to their attention. What about the Social Security 2100 Act? Do you support that? If you don't support it, let me know why you don't support it. You throw that to a politician and now they really, they really need to be on their toes. First off, they need to know what the Social Security 2100 Act is. And then they need to know, okay, well, this is what I like about it, but this is what I don't like. So you're, you're engaging them in a way where they're going to have to respond, okay? And I'm talking about, it, this would mainly be if you went to a town hall or if you were uh, talking to uh, politicians in person or talking to their staff in person. Uh, obviously, if you write a letter to them, then they're they're going to, and I've done this before, you write a letter to them, and then they'll send you a response, and a lot of times the response doesn't even answer the letter. They're not even reading the letters for the most part. They're just seeing that it's Social Security, and they're sending a response that talks about the issues with Social Security, and they want to protect it, and that's all they'll say. They won't say anything else, so... And that's, that's across the board. I've sent some letters out to different politicians, both Democrats and Republicans, and I've gotten similar responses, which, um, you know, that, that's concerning to me. But as I stated earlier in this video, in order for us to see some changes when it comes to Social Security, we have to make sure these politicians know that we know about Social Security and we know the different options that are out there. Because if we don't know the options then they can kind of tell us, well, this is what we have to do. Oh, no, 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 you don't have to raise a full retirement age. You can raise the cap on people making over 400000 Or you can raise the cap across the board for everyone paying into the payroll contribution right now, so they'll have to pay maybe 1% or 2% more. That would provide reform for Social Security and extend it out for another 75 years. If you know these things then you can come back to a politician and say, no, you don't have to do this. Because most people don't want to work until they're 70. They want to be able to retire at 67. But the talk now is they want you to work longer. Oh, you live longer? Work a little bit longer. That's the, that's the fix. And then what they don't tell you when it comes to raising the full retirement age, it's only going to amount to about 20% of where they need to be. So you're telling me you want to raise the full retirement age, which means I need to work longer, and then you still need to do more to address that other 80%? You know, it's, 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 it's really crazy. And that just shows you when you have politicians out there just talking, they're just making it sound like, oh, all we need to do is raise the full retirement age, and then, you know, means test Social Security, and that's it. That's all we need to do, and that's going to fix it. Well, that's not enough. And then when you start means testing Social Security, what they're really saying is, they want to make drastic cuts to Social Security to get you down to a level where now we can extend the program out, but you're not going to be receiving as much in benefits. If that's the case, why not just wait 11 years and let the trust funds run out of money, and then you'll only see a 23% cut? Because if you're doing the raising the full retirement age, for every year you raise the full retirement age, that's a 7% cut to Social Security benefits. So right now, the full retirement age is 67. You raise it to 70. That's a 21% cut right there. And then if you start talking about means testing Social Security, so people who are middle class, maybe upper middle class, they're going to receive less in Social Security benefits, so they're going to see a cut to their benefits. 
and that cut could be 10%, 15%, or 20%. So you could be looking, realistically, looking at a situation where if you wait 11 years and get a 23% cut, that's better than what some of these politicians are talking about doing right now. So you need to be careful. You need to be really careful. Okay, guys, if you guys uh, have any questions, post them down below. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. Please subscribe for more, and I'll talk to you in the next one. Bye.